So first of all, I'd like to say thank you for hitting a thousand subs. That's pretty neat. Uh, I've never really wanted to become a huge channel or anything. I just like the conversations down in the comments, to be uh, to be honest. But I like that it's kind of growing, and I like that the level of discourse we're having in the comments is still pretty positive, and everyone's good at having a discussion about what they like and don't like without it getting out of hand, even with a thousand subs now. So that's pretty cool. <clears throat> now with this video, I'd like to try to do something a little different. Uh, I'm actually up. To, I got caught up on the Lightbringer series. I'm now up. I've finished book three, and I only put out a review for book one. What I'd like to kind of do is a spoiler-free discussion of the series as a whole, uh, because I realize if I keep putting out these just one book at a time reviews of series, a series could suddenly get really bad, and then I've maybe encouraged a bunch of people to read the first two books. And then I've wasted their time because the third gets terrible. That is not the case with Lightbringer. Uh, but I just kind of want to do start talking about series as a whole. So what I'm going to do in this video is a review of actually book two and book three for Lightbringer. Because I've, I've read both and I very much so enjoyed both. And I'd like to get into them. Uh, I'm sorry for being gone for so long. I recently moved down to Nashville. That's why my background has changed again. And it's been quite busy these last few weeks. I hope to get videos up at least once a month over the next few months, but over the next six uh, months, I'm going to be quite busy. So it might be kind of iffy. Uh, I did recently get a book from another up and coming author. I'm going to start next and that'll be, I'll talk more about that at the end of the video, but getting into Lightbringer book two. Book two from Lightbringer is called The Broken Eye, and I'm actually going to talk about this one less than book three, but book two had some great plot advances. It had some, again, wonderful character development, and I would say it's very similar to book one. Now, the only negative I have to add without getting into spoilers much is the magic system started getting a little more hazy for me. Uh, the first book really clearly defined what was going on with this magic system, and in book two, there seemed to be some new additions to what the magic could do, some magical artifacts and stuff that just seemed to kind of come out of left field and certainly didn't fit, in my opinion, what was presented so far. Uh, now, aside from that, book two does take the uh, shift a bit away from some of the characters we've been following pretty closely up to this point and focuses more on some other care other people uh, and lets them develop as well. Now, this is something I want to praise for Lightbringer as a whole. Uh, there is no one central main character. Uh, you cannot pinpoint the one person this book is all about, really. We follow maybe three or four people the closest, but everyone seems to share this spotlight quite a bit. You could argue Kip is the main character, but I would argue against it because he does get a whole lot of time developed, devoted to him, but he's certainly not the most important person in, ter in uh, terms of shaping events. Uh, he's certainly kind of still developing and not reached his full potential, while other characters we have seen start developing and reach their potential within these books and have had more important world-changing events around them. Uh, now, Guy uh, Gavin Guile's uh, arc in this book is quite interesting, and... I, I can't really get into anything with him without really getting heavily into spoilers, and if you've read the books, you know why. But I'm going to go ahead and give book two just kind of an overall rating, because I want to talk about book three more. In book two, I'm going to give a solid eight out of ten. I think it held up a lot of what book one did pretty well. It got a little bit more hazy in terms of world building, uh, but it did a great job with the character development, which I'm still going to keep it a nine out of ten. Uh, and the plot, I'm going to keep it a nine out of ten. I mean, they're, they're both really, really well done. It's just I think the world building may have taken a bit of a hit in terms of things just happening happening and not really making as quite s as much sense as before and you could even argue that some things happened and developed this world just to advance the plot uh, which I'm certainly not a fan of that happening. Lightbringer book three is The Blood Mirror. Now The Blood Mirror I just finished two days ago and it is dark. Uh, this book is kind of heavy hitting and I don't mean dark as in like the horrible things happening, but we see one character really going through almost like hell uh, in this book and being forced to do just terrible things and really having a lot of conflict around it. Uh, and that character is Tia. Uh, Tia is kind of walking a line throughout this book that is just painful to watch for her. And I, I get so curious about her character development that I find myself watching just her thought process because uh, I want to know, is she going to end up going down a darker road or is she going to kind of stay who she is and kind of stick to herself? Uh, because she's being forced to do just horrendous things throughout this book and by far the most 
the character I was most interested in this book was Tia. <laughs> there is not the stereotypical happy ending for anyone in this book, really. It is just a march through events with them. Um, and that's actually something I'm going to give Lightbringer praise for. I don't like when a book feels the need to kind of hastily wrap certain things up just because one of the books in the series is ending. Uh, that's something that Wheel of Time is actually guilty of quite a bit, and it's one of my gripes with the series, is they feel the need to end every storyline uh, as soon as a book ends. And with Lightbringer, that is certainly not the case. Uh, we are left hanging a lot, and I would say the one I'm hanging most with on seeing what's going to happen is Tia. Uh, she is just fascinating, and I'm what well, the the path that was clearly set up for her by the author as a subversion did not happen and it kind of makes the readers care about her more because that's where I first that's where I certainly found my focus most directed in this book uh, now the next character I want to talk about is Karis now Karis is the definition of a badass uh, she is now carrying the weight of the world on her shoulders without getting too much into spoilers here she is just doing a fantastic job now if you've noticed Karis throughout the books, she actually kind of developed the least. Uh, she started as a badass and she still is one. But the way she has developed in some ways is that we've seen her become more confident and showing off just how truly capable she is. It's not a matter that she's become more capable. It's a matter of her letting that show and made, letting her voice be heard, which is something I've really enjoyed. And I want to get, give Brent Weeks just a ton of praise for how well he writes female characters. Uh, they're never just there to service a male protagonist or anything. Uh, they always have their own character, their own drive. They're very distinguishable from each other. And he doesn't shy away from sexualization, but he does it in a very sp respectful, realistic way, especially in the world he's created. Uh, so Brent Weeks is a wonderful author in terms of that. Um, now, the two more characters I want to talk about are more difficult to talk about without spoilers, uh, and that's Kip and Gavin. Uh, Gavin, man, uh, I can't say much without <laughs> really spoiling a lot, uh, but seeing the fall that Gavin has gone through is just heart-wrenching, and it gets to a point where you almost just want him to die, get put out of his misery because of just how bad what he's going through is. Um, I really liked Gavin from the first book and seeing the twists and turns and the level of trust that the reader lacks with him now, not due to who he is, but kind of, it's so hard to talk about without spoilers. And I think I may have touched lightly on spoilers here, but Gavin is just a wonderful character to follow because the reader is just on shaky ground with him. You don't know what's real what's not just it's it's impossible yet to distinguish and i've i've loved following him and now we're going to shift over to kip probably the most lighthearted storyline in the series right now and that's not saying much uh <laughs> kip is going through some stuff having some issues with his wife and just watching how that's handled is actually really cool uh, that there's a real medical condition that's bothering the two of them and seeing that handled this well and this accurately by the author is again just so cool and it's actually a medical condition that I've heard of before and you know it's it's cool to see it represented so well and never shamed or anything like that uh, so that was pretty neat but Kip himself is turning into something else or seeing him develop in ways where they very directly say it many times throughout the series. He walks a line between Gavin and the spider uh, to see where he's going to land. And it's, it's interesting to see him land pretty much smack dab in the middle a lot of the time. Uh, Kip is interesting in the fact that we're pretty, I'm pretty sure he's going to be a good guy, but is he more leaning towards the gray area? Is he kind of morally bendable? Uh, Kip's definitely changing, and it's for the better, in my opinion, because the world he's in is hard, and he's going to need to be a stone, you know, and, and, and a person who can do difficult things without hesitation, and he's developing in that way, so that's pretty cool. Now, once again, my big negative with book three is the fact that the magic system is getting a little more hazy. There are even more things that just kind of come out of nowhere, and it's like, oh, we can do this now, or there's this artifact that can do this, and it just is kind of to push the plot along, which in book one was something this author really avoided, but in book two, it got kind of bad, and in book three, it's 
it's almost comically bad at one point. And if you've read it, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to give it some negative there. I'm going to drag it down. That being said, I would say the character development is even better in book three than it's been in the first two books. Uh, the character development we see here to see these characters landing where they're landing is just wonderful. Uh, they're so interesting, and I cannot wait for the next book to come out. Um, oh, the only other negative I've had for the series as a whole, and this is not a spoiler, but it is a direct thing that happens. There's just times where characters play Magic the Gathering. <laughs> uh, it's called something else, and they do it in like a weird way, but I'm not a fan of that game. I've, I've, I find it kind of annoying, and to have suddenly in this great book these characters suddenly sitting down and playing something that seems like a weird card game, to me is very jarring and takes me out of the world. I get the author's a fan, and he wants to incorporate something he loves into the books, and he has every right to do that. But that, to me, is a pretty uh, big negative. So I'm going to give the series as a whole so far a 9 out of 10. I'd recommend it to anybody. Lightbringer is awesome. Uh, it's one of the books uh, series I would recommend the highest, especially to women, uh, because the females are represented so well and take the spotlight in the forefront and are decision makers and plot progressors uh, at least 50% of the time. And that's great. Uh, but that's my thoughts on Lightbringer as a whole. It's a little more jumbled because I don't really have time to sit down and take notes like I normally do. But this book series is so good, uh, and I recommend people check it out. Uh, please let me know down below uh, what you think of Lightbringer. If you've already read it, tell me what your favorite parts are. If you haven't, tell me if you th think you're going to pick it up or not based on what I'm saying here. Uh, and uh, next book I'm going to read is Wren by Charity W. Kelly. Uh, she sent me this book, and I cannot wait to check it out. Uh, it will probably be a good month before I'm able to put out another video and review this book, uh, but I'm very excited to pick it up. And after that, I'm actually probably going to read a classic sci-fi book, a goofy, wacky, weird one and I will let it up to you all to figure out which one that'll be. Uh, but thank you very much, and of course, uh, like and subscribe if you have not already, and have a great day. Peace.